Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, we're going to discuss how to find the greatest common factor between two numbers. And as you can see, there are four uh, problems here and sets of numbers that we're going to find the greatest common factor. So for example, number one, we have 10 and 15. So let's jump right into that one and see how we find the greatest common factor. Well, before we find the greatest common factor, we need to know what factor means. And a factor are, factors are all the numbers that can multiply together to give you that number. So let's make sense of this. So we have 10 here. We're going to list all the factors of 10. And like I said, it's all the numbers that can multiply together to give you 10. So for every number, when you're listing the factors, you can start with two things, one and that number itself. And I'm going to put some space in between for the other factors. These are a factor pair here because I can do one times 10 equals 10 or 10 times one. That's a multiplication fact that gives me 10. So those are factors. Can you think of any other pairs that will equal 10? Hopefully you're thinking two and five, right? Two times five is 10 or five times two is 10. So I fill in my uh, space here with the two and the five. And 10 has four factors, one, two, five, and 10. Two and five are a pair as well. If you wanna connect them, if that helps you out, that works. So let's do 15. So we need to think of the factors of 15. So we always start with one and the number itself and leave some space in between for your other factors. Now, once you get better at this, you will get uh, very good at the spacing. When you're first starting out, you may have trouble spacing out in between there where you can put your factors. That's fine. As long as you have all your factors listed, don't worry so much about the spacing. So one in 15, now sometimes if the number's prime, you'll only have a one and that number itself. Pri that's what exactly what prime means. But composite numbers means, means you have more than just one and the number itself. And 15's composite, so can we think of another, uh, any other factors for 15? Hopefully we are thinking three and five, right? Three times five is 15. So three and five are a pair, one and 15 are a pair, and there aren't any more, so we're done. So now we need to find the greatest common factor. So the greatest one that they have in common. So I see that they have one in common, and they also have five in common. So what's the greatest? Well, five. So we can put GCF, greatest common factor, equals five. All right, let's try number two here. So we have 12 and six. Let's start with our factors of 12. So we start with one and 12. Well, 12 is even, so I know two is gonna be a factor. And you can think, well, what's, what's two's partner? Well, six, two times six gives me 12. So put my six here. And there's one more pair or two more factors for 12. And it's three and four. And that's it for 12. Now let's write our factors for six. So we always start with one and the number itself. Six is even, so I know two's automatically going to be a factor. And two's partner or uh, other factor for six is three here. So there's your list of factors for six. So I see they have one in common. And sometimes that will be your answer for greatest common factor, not for number two here. Um, well, speaking of two, they have two in common, three in common, and they also have six in common. So they have a lot of common factors, but we want the greatest. So the GCF for 12 and six is going to be six. 
All right, number three and four here. If you feel comfortable enough to try a couple on your own, feel free to press pause, finish three and four, and then when you're ready, press play and check your work with mine. If you want to do three and four with me, that's fine as well. So let's do uh, 20 and 10. So we'll start with one and 20. And I know that 20 is even, so 2 is going to be a factor. And this partner's 10. Uh, any others? Well, 4 and 5. And that's actually it for 20. So let's do 10. 1 and 10. And when you get into greatest common factors, one thing you should look for is if you already have a list of something, use it. And we know that 10 is 1, 2, 5, and 10. Notice my spacing wasn't great on that one. I have a lot of extra space here. That's fine. I have all my factors listed, and that's, that's the most important part. So I see that 1, 2, they have 5 in common, and then they have 10 in common. So the GCF is 10 for 20 and 10. All right, lastly, number four, we have two odd numbers here, nine and 21. So let's write our factors. So for nine, we'll start with one and nine. And then is there anything else that we can multiply to get nine? Well, three times three, so three is a factor. You only need to write three once though. 21, we'll start with one and 21. Now, are there any factors of 21 other than one and 21? Yes, three times seven. So there are our factors for nine and 21. They have one in common and they also have three in common. So the GCF or greatest common factor is going to be three. So there you have it. There's greatest common factor. Hopefully that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.